All right, welcome back to the uh, continuing series I'm teaching on uh, Sprite Kit. The um, the earlier videos were obviously a kind of light introduction to uh, just Xcode in general, and um, we poked apart the uh, the Hello World template, as some of you might have seen. Uh, f in, as we go forward here, I'm going to be creating a uh, project from scratch. So if you uh, you felt like there was anything um, with kind of the basics of coding that you did pick up on in the, any of the previous videos. Well, that's I think it's okay because uh, we're going to be starting with scratch from scratch with this uh, next project, and uh, that does not exactly mean that we're going to be uh, working at breakneck speed because I'm going to be creating every line of, of code from scratch. So um, you know it's not hard to follow along. I don't think when we uh, when we take that approach to it. And uh, for beginners, I think that's obviously the best thing to do instead of throwing a bunch of pre-written code at you. Uh, and in terms of what we're going to be looking at, well, here we go. This is um, the uh, little demo game that we're going to be um, working with in the uh, the simulator. Basically, you got uh, three chances to avoid this boulder, and if it hits you a uh, third time, it's going to uh, reset the, uh, the game. And if you press down, you will jump up, and uh, you can see that even if you kind of don't time it just right, you'll still get uh, hit by that guy. So you got to make the, a perfect jump, and it actually helps you to kind of get pushed back a little bit because then you got a bit more time to, to avoid getting hit by the uh, the boulder. And just in terms, there, it's, yeah, I did it. It's possible. Uh, just in terms of the uh, the programming that we're going to lo be looking at here, obviously uh, we've got um, lots of children that are getting added on there. We're going to be working with uh, texture atlases, uh, lots to do with actions. And um, well, just you know the the general things that go into creating a game, uh, move it, you know, kind of recalculating where these objects are uh, along every frame. And by the way, we um, are not going to be using any physics with um, this particular example, but uh, obviously the the door is kind of open in a later tutorial to um, add physics to this to uh, move all these same uh, elements. So uh, let's look at some of our assets and I think this is always a good idea to check out early on uh, I'm gonna go over here to the um, the file that I use to uh, create all of this uh, artwork this is a, a flash file and my timeline is over here this is just basically keyframes for all the art uh, being broken up I don't know why there's a some action script in there that's weird so uh, and this is my preferred program for, for uh, creating um, any sort of uh, artwork for a game I um, very comfortable in Flash, as some of you guys might know. And uh, in terms of things that we should talk about, well, uh, basically, how are we going to break up our assets here? And um, you know, since I've already done that, uh, I'm just going to step you through this real quick. Uh, what I've done is put everything that you're seeing right here into an image of its own. So that includes the back of the railing, uh, you know, this mountainous, mountainous uh, thing, everything in the background. Uh, that's all in one a single image file, and then. Let's uh, keep making things visible here. Uh, obviously, these uh, frames for the character are all broken up into individual uh, files, and we'll take a look at those. And uh, then the boulder is its own element. So is the shadow, which uh, just basically follows along where the boulder goes. And then this little bit of a uh, railing right here, the one in the front, where did I go? That guy. Uh, this is its own element too because I wanted to be able to show that the boulder was uh, rolling across this bridge uh, between obviously the back railing and uh, the front railing. Uh, so those are just some things to consider when you are uh, creating your own assets and of course all these are um, export out as .png files with transparency. So uh, if you were to take a look at for example the uh, the railing right here it just looks like this and that's uh, transparent pi pixel data back there and that's why you're able to uh, see through it and in case you have uh, never exported out anything um, as a PNG or from from flash uh, one easy way of doing this is um, instead of creating a, um, a your own file I'm just gonna do that real quick to show you how annoying this is uh, instead of creating your own file and then putting the um, the asset in there and kind of like putting it right up against the edge and then figuring out what the stage size should be. Let's see, this is probably going to be about 60. Oh, oh, it's still off. This is like 160. Of course, I could just look at how wide this image is, but again, I'm trying to make a point here. All right, so that's 182. Let's make it like 184. And uh, 45 is probably all we need. Okay, so something like this, right? 
Um, and then you could go over here to export image and um, export out a, a .png from that. Uh, alternatively, <laughs> the easier thing I found is to just right click on the symbol, okay, and uh, that's obviously a flash term. If you have no interest in using flash, well, don't worry about it, but um, I'm trying to, trying to make it so I can screen capture this. There it is. PNG sequence and then you are going to put in here the name. You don't need to put in the file extension name because if you do, you'll end up with a file that's like this .png .png. So just leave that blank and uh, this would be the asset for our uh, non-retina display devices because I'm going to set this to uh, 72 dpi and then uh, everything else you can probably just leave the same. By default it should be 32 bit. Uh, click on export and then you're going to want to do the same thing of course for the um, retina display devices. So in this case um, you can just put um, whatever name you want really. It, it doesn't matter. Uh, I usually write uh, an underscore HD or just HD. Uh, I think previously yeah, I do have um, underscore HD. Uh, a lot in I mean if you were to go kind of um, following the uh, the previous protocols for um, naming your high resolution images you'd put um, at two times uh, over there and uh, again you don't have to put in the dot png and uh, we will actually do that for the uh, the character because when we include it into an uh, into a uh, atlas or a texture atlas uh, you still go with that at two times but um, for um, for now, we can just get away with this railing uh, HD, and uh, the big the main thing you want to do here now is set the DPI up to 144. Hit uh, export, and again, just do that uh, for any of the uh, the other graphics. So let's real quick switch over here to our project in Xcode, and let's see. Did I not actually open that yet? All right. So image assets or XC assets and a nice little way to, to kind of get this to name itself is find your um, non-retina display image okay because that doesn't have anything after it so it's just called railing.png and then just drop that in here and it will automatically take that name and put it over here and of course it's also putting it in for the uh, non-retina display device and then we just take our other one, drop that guy in there, and we've got our images good to go for uh, the railing. And you can just do that same thing with um, everything else. Uh, for example, uh, landscape. And uh, again, our character we're going to save for uh, a texture atlas, which we'll uh, look at right now. 